Hey everyone, Pastor Tim here. And from the time we're able to start understanding things as kids, we learn very quickly that we live in a world of rules and laws. We have rules in the home, we have rules in the classroom, we have rules in society. And a lot of those times, those rules are there to protect us or they're there to help us get along better with others. But sometimes as we're navigating our way through life, we find out that there are some rules that are just downright ridiculous. And so I did some research this week on rules that are on the books in many states that shouldn't be on the books anymore. And I know these are true because I got them from the internet. And as you know, one of the rules of life is if it's on the internet, then it must be true. So here we go. These are a few laws that apparently are still laws in certain states and certain cities. For example, starting here where we are in Arizona, uh, there's a city in Arizona where it is illegal to drive a car in reverse. Uh, in Oklahoma, people who make ugly faces at dogs can be arrested and put in jail or fined. In Nicholas County, West Virginia, a preacher is not allowed to tell jokes from the pulpit. And from the response I usually get, that hasn't been a problem here. Uh, in New Hampshire, it's illegal to carry or collect seaweed at night. In Alabama, there's a thing called a fake mustache law. And it's illegal to make a person in church laugh by wearing a fake mustache on Sunday. Uh, in Salem, West Virginia, it's against the law to eat candy less than an hour and a half before a church service. In Missouri, it's illegal to drive a car with an uncaged bear in it. In Pennsylvania, you have to dismantle your car and hide it if you're sharing the road with a team of skittish horses. In Memphis, Tennessee, a woman driver must always be preceded by a man waving a red flag. <laughs> Insert your own joke. And then in Boston, it's illegal to bathe unless prescribed by a physician. And a lot of little boys are saying, let's move to Boston. All right, so sometimes laws, sometimes rules protect us, sometimes they're good for us, sometimes they're just downright silly, but today... We're going to look at an ancient law that Jesus says is actually not a law at all. It's a gift, and it's a gift that can put your life back together. And so we worship together today in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, everybody. Please stand up and help us sing. Power of Jesus, the angels, Lord of all, 
Last weekend, I introduced you to our new friend. This is Doug Dawson. And I said last week that Doug is fairly typical of many of us who live in the United States of America. Doug is a hard worker. He works long, hard hours. In fact, he has worked his butt off. As you can see right here, he has worked his butt off at a job that he used to love, but now he hates because that job crushes his soul. When he gets home, he's exhausted, but now he's got to amp up the energy because he's got kids he wants to invest in. He's got to poke and prod them to get their three to four hours of homework done a day, plus he's running them back and forth to this rehearsal, to that practice. And every once in a while, maybe, just maybe, he's able to kiss his wife goodbye or hello as they pass each other throughout their busy days. Because his life is so busy, he doesn't have a chance to eat well. He's eating on the go. He doesn't sleep well either. Forty percent of us say that our lack of sleep is impacting our everyday lives. Sixty-two percent of us have been driving while drowsy. And 27 percent of us have actually fallen asleep while we're driving. So Doug isn't eating well. He's not getting enough sleep. And he's spending far too much time on the screen. There are some people who say that we spend an average of seven hours on the screen a day. I think that's kind of low. In fact, one stat I saw said that at the height of the pandemic, we were spending 19 hours a day on the screen. Imagine that. And almost four hours of it are spent just on our cell phones. And that's stressing people out. There are some who suggest that we're going to spend 44 years of our lives on screen. That's too much. And what the screen does is it stresses us out. So you put all that together. He's at a job he doesn't like. He's got a family he's trying to balance. He doesn't eat well. He's not sleeping right. He's on the screen too much. It's no wonder his life is falling apart. It's no wonder he's losing his mind. It's no wonder his intestines are tied in knots, that he's got heartburn. And when he looks to the future, he doesn't see a lot of hope. Doug's life, Doug's body is screaming a warning at him. It's warning him that he can't keep up this pace, and that warning is buried deep in his DNA. It's a little alarm that was put there by his creator to let him know that he can't keep up that pace, but also to point him to a gift that can slow him down and put his life back together. It's an ancient gift. It was given thousands of years ago to the people of Israel. For over 400 years, the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt. And every day, day after day, week after month, year after year, it was the same thing. Each day was bone-crushing, never-ending, back-breaking work. They never got a day off. And after 400 years of that, God intervened. And God rescued the people of Israel. He led them away from Egypt through the Red Sea on dry land, out into the wilderness. And it was while the people of Israel were in the wilderness that God began to reshape their identity, to change them from slaves into the people of God. And one of the reasons why God called Israel to be his chosen people was because he wanted Israel to show the world what God is like. And so one of the gifts that God gave to the people of Israel to forge them into God's people and for them to follow in order to show the world what God looks like is what we call the Ten Commandments. Now, we call them commandments, and so we oftentimes think of them as laws or as rules, which they are. But at a deeper level, the Ten Commandments are a statement about the character of God. They reflect God's values. And so what the Ten Commandments share with us is that God is a God who places a high premium on, hum on humanity that God values the sacredness of life, that God values integrity in relationships, that God values marital faithfulness, that God values justice, that God uh, values love for neighbor. And these were radical values. These were radical laws back when they were first given. The other cultures 
had gods who always acted violently and who always devalued life and devalued humanity. But the Ten Commandments forged the people of Israel in such a way that they were able to reflect a very different view of a very different kind of God. And one of the most radical laws of the Ten Commandments was a law about taking a day off, the Sabbath day. Imagine being slaves and for 400 years never having a day off and suddenly your God comes along and says, I want you to sleep in. I want you to rest up. I want you to worship. No other culture had a day off. No other culture had a day of rest. And so by taking that day off once a week, Israel was saying something about God, that God is a God who cares about our well-being and that God has created us not only to work but to rest. And so the Sabbath day became a gift to put our lives back together. So by the time we get to Jesus, the Sabbath day is seen more as a burden than as a gift. As often happens when there's a rule or a law, we'll push the boundaries to see how far we can go before we break it. And that's what was happening with the Sabbath day. And so over the course of time, the Jewish people put together all kinds of different rules about the Sabbath day. Things you could do and not do. How far you could walk on the Sabbath day. How much food you could cook on the Sabbath day. Uh, if you ever travel to Israel and you're there on Shabbat, which is the Sabbath day, which goes from Friday night or Friday evening to Saturday evening, the one thing you don't want to do is get on the Shabbat elevator. So once a week, there's an elevator programmed in all hotels that works automatically. So it opens the doors. It keeps the doors open for a long period of time so people can get in and off, and then it shuts the doors, and then it moves to the next floor and does the same thing over again so that you don't have to push a button, which would be work. And what you don't want to do is get in on the first floor of the Shabbat elevator and take it to the 20th floor. You'll be there the whole Shabbat. And that's what had happened with the Sabbath back in Jesus' day. The Sabbath day had become a burden draining people of life rather than a gift giving them life. And so one day Jesus decides to re-Sabbath the Sabbath, to put the Sabbath back into the Sabbath. It's a Sabbath day. He's in the synagogue preaching, and there's a man who has a withered hand. His hand doesn't work, and because of it, he can't work. So Jesus calls him forward. Now some of his critics are in the audience, and they want to see if he's going to heal this man, which he can't do. There were laws about what you could and could not do for people's health on the Sabbath. So, for example, if someone wounded himself or herself, you could stop the wound from getting worse, but you couldn't heal it. So this man has a shriveled hand, and the law would say, it's not going to make any difference if you heal that today or tomorrow, so wait until the Sabbath day is over. Don't work on the Sabbath. Heal him the six other days of the week. And so what does Jesus do? He heals the man on the Sabbath. And when his critics cry foul, Jesus says, hang on a minute. You've forgotten what the Sabbath is all about. The Sabbath is precisely for this. Because the Sabbath is about putting our lives back together. The Sabbath is about restoring our lives. The Sabbath is about healing us. The Sabbath is a gift to put our lives together back together. And that's why Jesus healed the man, because that's precisely what the Sabbath is for. Now, here we are 2,000 years later, and the Sabbath day has pretty much gone the way of the dinosaurs. We don't really honor a Sabbath day in our culture or in most of the world anymore. We're busy. We're running 24-7 like Doug Dawson is. And we live in a culture where our worth and value tends to be based on how busy we are, how much we perform, and if we want to feel good about ourselves, we have to be constantly busy, we have to constantly be performing. And we simply cannot take it. Our bodies are on overload. We are burning out. We can't keep up that pace. Because here's the thing. When we break the Sabbath, we end up breaking our own lives. Because it goes against the way we were created. 
If you remember back to the very first chapter of the Bible, when we're created, we are created at the end of the sixth day, right before the Sabbath begins. And so what that means is our first full day as human beings was spent in rest. And what that tells us is we were created to rest in order to work. We weren't created to work in order to maybe possibly get some rest. We were created to begin life out of rest, and that sets the agenda for our lives. The problem is we've lost the ability to rest. And all of the research tells us that what the Bible says is true. We need to rest. We need to slow down. And so I want to share with you a few tips on how we can put the Sabbath back into our lives. Ben Franklin once said, he who can take a nap is greater than he that can take cities. He that can take a rest is greater than he that can take cities. So let's talk a little bit about how we can take a nap, how we can take a rest. So I want to share with you very quickly four tips for you to begin to build Sabbath into your life so that God can restore you and put you back together. The first is this. Take a two-minute gratitude Sabbath every day. Take a two-minute gratitude Sabbath every day. So I would encourage you to put this in your calendar every day. Put it in your phone. Set a little alarm. And at the same time every day, maybe it's when you get up in the morning. Maybe it's right before you eat lunch. Maybe it's before you go to bed. Just take a moment. Slow down. Close your eyes. Breathe deeply and slowly. And then just let your mind give thanks for two minutes. And what that does is it slows you down for the day. It helps you focus on the good things that God is doing in your life. But more than that, it reconnects your soul with God. So take a two-minute gratitude Sabbath. Number two, take a weekly Sabbath. We need a full day off. Now, in Jesus' day, the guilt people had was not doing the Sabbath properly. In our day, the guilt many of us have is we don't take a Sabbath at all. And I think in part because we don't understand what a Sabbath day is. Yeah, it's a day off. But that doesn't mean that we, we, don't, that we can't do anything. The purpose of a Sabbath day is to move away from our regular work rhythm into a different rhythm for one day that will re-energize our batteries and our soul. So for some of us, a Sabbath day will mean not doing anything all day long. For others of us, it may mean that we're going to go out for a big, long hike, or we're going to read a book, or we're going to go to a movie, or we're going to go to dinner, we're going to go out on a date. Whatever it is that re-energizes us, that takes us out of the work rhythm and puts us into a different rhythm that is energizing, that's what a Sabbath looks like. And so it's perfectly okay to do things on the Sabbath, but we want to do things that restore our soul. So take a weekly Sabbath. And it may take some time to get there, but take a weekly Sabbath. You were created for it. Thirdly, take a Sabbath from your screens. Take a screen Sabbath. Now, this is a tough one because a lot of us are addicted to our screens and a lot of us do our work, our lives on screen. So I recommend that two hours before you go to bed every night, you turn that screen off. You turn off your emails, you turn off your notifications, you just turn the screen off and let your mind begin to refresh itself. Now, some of us, like I do, I read at night before I go to bed, I use a Kindle. That's a screen. That's different than interaction with a screen or checking emails or looking at Facebook or checking the news. We need to debrief from that so that we can slow down and sleep well. And then I encourage you to get in the habit of a screen Sabbath for a day. So when you take your day off, try as best you can to get off that screen. Man, I know how hard it is for me. I'm always checking Facebook or the news. And I'm trying to, as best I can on my day off to not do that because we need to get a break mentally from what the screen does to us. And then number four, take a worship Sabbath. Take a worship Sabbath, which is what we're doing right now together. Now, most of us, as a part of our day off, worship. I happen to work at work on the weekend, so it's a little more difficult for me, so I have to find different times to worship. But take a worship Sabbath because the whole point of the Sabbath is to reconnect you with the sacredness of life, and that happens when you reconnect with the creator of life. Albert Schweitzer said it this way, 
If your soul has no Sunday, it becomes an orphan. I love that. If your soul has no Sunday, it becomes an orphan. We go through six days a week, and it's really easy to forget our Creator. It's easy to forget the sacredness of life. It's easy to forget the rootedness of life. That's why we're created to reconnect our soul with our Creator, and that puts our lives back together. So Jesus has an invitation for you today. And that invitation is to come away and rest with me a while. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a little Sabbath moment. Uh, I'd like you to close your eyes, and I want you to just relax, just let your shoulders drop. And as I recite these words, I want you to visualize them in your mind. All right? So just take a deep breath, and let's take a Sabbath moment. The Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. He makes you lie down in green pastures. He leads you beside quiet waters. He restores your soul. He guides you in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will fear no evil, for God is with you. His rod and his staff, they comfort you. He prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He anoints your head with oil. Your cup overflows. Surely goodness and love and grace will follow you all the days of your life, and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. All right, if you haven't fallen asleep, you can open your eyes again. I want to welcome you to the Worship of Community of Grace. We're so glad to have you with us today online here on Facebook and YouTube. And if you want to do a little call out to us and let us know or shout out, let us know where you're watching from or if we can pray for you or answer any questions that you have, uh, please let us know that in the comments. If this is your first time with us today online, we'd like to thank you for joining us. And we want to do that by sending you a gift. And uh, this will give you an opportunity to take just a little Sabbath. We're going to send you to Starbucks. Get yourself a cup of coffee and just sit for 10 minutes and enjoy it. Slow your life down a little bit. You can get that if you text the word new to 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484. We'll pray for you this week as well. Uh, that's one way that we can support each other. Text the word prayer to that same number. And uh, as you're going to find out here in just a few moments as we get to the end of the service, we are just a few weeks away from Easter and then the summer season. And if you want to keep up to speed with all the things happening here at Grace online and in-house, you can text the word events to 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484. Now, last week I mentioned that we were in the midst of Feed My Starving Children, and uh, we had turned our worship center into a food pack, and uh, we were packing meals for that great organization, and last Saturday I announced to you that at that point we had packed 63,000 meals. Uh, I'm happy to tell you that the grand total was a little bit over 124 thousand meals that we packed t together. And not only did we pack 124,000 meals, but we paid for all those meals. We raised about $30,000 to pay for all those meals. So good on you for the good work that you did as we celebrated our 17th anniversary last week. And I want to encourage you to keep up the good work for the sake of the world that God loves. So if you would like to text in a gift, you can do that by uh, putting into the, uh, the message how much you'd like to give, and then just send it to 623-295-2484, 623-295-2484. That's the text number. You can hold up the camera on your phone to that QR code, which is right there. And that'll take you to some prompts. And also you'll see right here below screen is boldrecklessgrace.org slash giving. And there are other opportunities that you can give on a regular basis. And so if you believe in this mission, if you believe in this ministry, I uh, encourage you to give. Uh, not only does it do things like feed my starving children, but every week we are uh, able to bring God's grace to people who are going through uh, trying times through counseling, uh, through pastoral care support, of course through worship. And so we thank you for your generosity. So I'm going to be back here in just a moment with you. We're going to celebrate communion together. Before we do that, we're going to give you a little Sabbath break to enjoy some music.
sing it out, everyone. Now. On the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink and said, This is my blood. It's been poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the gospel, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you eat that piece of bread or cracker, this is the body of Christ given for you. And as you drink the grape juice or the wine, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Again, thanks for being with us. And I uh, want to let you know that we're going to be with you again next weekend. And I'm going to share with you the nine most shocking words in the entire Bible. The nine most shocking words in the entire Bible. 
and they're probably words that you've used at some point in your life. So that'll be next week as we get ready for Palm Sunday. It is Palm Sunday weekend. We'll be with you Saturday night at 5 o'clock, Facebook and YouTube, and then on demand after that. We'll also have worship services in-house, as we always do, at 9 o'clock and 1030. In between those two services, we have something for the children. It's a Sunday school for about 30 minutes, and uh, they do a lot of fun stuff together, and you can uh, see the information there, and our youth meets after the second service. And then, uh, as next week starts uh, Holy Week, we have Palm Sunday weekend, and then Friday, that Friday coming up is going to be Good Friday, and uh, that'll be on April 15th. We are going to be having a worship service in-house at 630. We will also have an online service at 630 on Facebook and YouTube. So both services on Good Friday, both in-house and online, will be at 630. And then we get to our Easter weekend worship. And so we will come to you online on Saturday, uh, the, six, uh, the 16th of April. And that will be at 5 o'clock, as always, on Facebook and YouTube. We will have our Easter online service. We will also have three in-house services on Easter. We're going to add one for, this, uh, for Easter only, Saturday at 4 o'clock. There will be a little Easter egg hunt for the kids afterwards. And then Easter Sunday at the, the 17th at 9 and 1030. And there will be an Easter egg hunt between those two services. So those will be our Easter services. And, uh, of course, our... Go Bold, Live Grace assignment is to invite people to Easter. And uh, so if you've got friends, family members who live in the area, invite them to join you. If you've got fa friends, family members who don't live in the area, they don't have a church to go to, invite them to join you for worship online. And all the information, boldrecklessgrace.org slash Easter. And then a couple weeks after that, we're going to do a community event for parents and grandparents uh, our good friend, Dr. Michael Gurian, is going to be with us. He and I do a podcast called The Wonder of Parenting Podcast, a brain science approach to parenting. And we're going to do a live one-hour free event for parents and grandparents. And we're going to look at how moms and dads tend to parent differently. And so it's going to be fun. It's going to be uh, entertaining. But more than that, informational. And we'll talk about uh, the, the differences that moms and dads can bring and how important it is to have males and females uh, in the lives of our kids and our grandkids. Uh, it's a free event. We're going to have a free event for the kids that whole hour. They'll be playing some games and stuff. And right before that, from 3.30 to 4 o'clock, we're going to have the ice cream truck here, free ice cream. So I hope you'll put that on your calendar. That's May 1st from 4 to 5 o'clock. Come a little early for ice cream, free for you and your kids. And uh, you can invite your friends to come along as well. It's not going to be religious, so you can invite your friends to come. And at least they'll be here in the church and experience uh, some really helpful stuff for them. All the information, again, boldrecklessgrace.org, boldrecklessgrace.org. And remember to invite some friends to join you for Easter. And so now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you, be gracious to you. And may the Lord always turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Go bold and live grace.